What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be experiencing the new ultimate luxury car from BMW, their BMW i7, fully electric limousine. We're going to be looking at the outside of this car, of course the interior and all of the gadgets, because there are many on this new i7, and then going for a drive with me being sat both in the back and then in the front of the BMW i7, which comes in as a fully electric 544 horse powered luxury limousine, basically to compete with that car right there, the S-Class. Now there is a petrol powered version and a hybrid version, but this is the fully electric. Now lots of cool lighting details around it, like these lights here on the front grill, which is massive and has divided quite a few uh, opinions. And these new double divided front lights, the top of which is completely kind of in this crystal finish, which you could see, for example, on like the Bentley Continental GTs. There's all sorts of games you can play around with uh, the spec of the outside of this car, including two packs. You can have the M Sport package for the exterior or the exclusive package, which this one has. I should mention this car comes from Monaco Royal Limousines, who are over there, who I say a massive thank you to, um, who have just received this. It's one of the first in the area and have given me access to it. So massive thanks to them and their socials will of course be down below. Very big car, 2.7 tons it weighs. It actually doesn't have a front boot. That's all electronics and it just has the kind of more classic rear boot, which has some stuff in it now, but is big without it necessarily being just an absolute monster. But most of the fun gadgets and everything happen on the inside of this car. You do get clues to it with all of these various cameras and sensors that there are all around the car. So you can tell that this thing is pretty high tech but most of it all happens on the inside. One cool gadget I can show you from here is that you can actually open all four doors from the key. It now has electric powered doors, this 7 Series, something that was first seen, I guess, on the Rolls Royces, which is owned by BMW. If I press this button right here, look at this, all four doors will simultaneously open and stop if I stop pressing on it. And then they'll close up again if I keep pressing. Whoop those stop right there. These are really trick doors. There's various ways of opening them. They'll stop if ever you're in the way of the electric door opening. You can open it completely manually, normally, or electrically. There's various different ways. Anyways, I never knew a door could be uh, so trick and so complicated to open, but it works quite nicely and is something that the S-Class doesn't do quite as well. Anyways, let's hop on the inside of this. You can tell it's not a full leather finish. It's actually a cashmere finish very fancy with some leather as well one of the reasons for this apparently is that uh, the chinese market love this finishing because it doesn't get quite as hot or as sticky uh, in the summer chinese market is going to represent about 45 percent of all these sales so that was a pretty important one for them it actually feels really nice looks quite cool i think don't know how it will do over time let's hop in and i'll show you more details okay now obviously as soon as you get in you're welcomed by just absolute luxury and quality everything you touch feels really really nice not a huge fan of these stalks here which are just feel quite plasticky but all the rest is very far from being plasticky for example you have this crystal finish on your seat controls which not only can be adjusted in basically every way imaginable it looks like it's just two buttons but you can move these things in every kind of direction and it gives you loads of uh, loads of different options that continues throughout the whole kind of dash here with this crystal i don't even know what you'd call this lighting feature sculpture type thing which can change color depending on what driving mode you're in for example if i put the hazard lights on that will all light up and go all the way around in red which is pretty cool there's just loads of cool design features and everything you touch is just such high quality so for example i'm now <laughs> touching this it's the uh speakers the bowers and wilkins upgraded sound system and just the way this is shaped and everything looks and feels so nice and it also sounds amazing which is the priority you know you've obviously got the stitching up here this really thick feeling leather alcantara on the ceiling right your ceiling is that what you'd say the roof lining there you go that's the proper term even on the inside of these pockets it's all finished in alcantara or suede pretty special place to be to be honest you do have the little blue circle around the bmw logo which is a giveaway as to this car being fully electric. In terms of technology, it has the latest BMW kind of double screen system here. So digital, full digital dash. Has this double 
design for uh, the top part of the dash, which I'm not so sure about, but yeah, I guess could do well. It's kind of comes up a level right here. Air vents and the way the air is distributed throughout the cabin is really trick and they're kind of quite hidden, these air vents. Air vents are never something that's particularly pretty to look at. For example, right under there, you can just about spot one. And the crystal continues even through the system that controls kind of your screen right here, which is of course touch as well. Really nice feedback. I actually sometimes get a bit annoyed at these systems. For example, if you want to, you know, adjust very quickly what you're doing with your aircon, it's all of a sudden quite a complicated system to be able to, you know, as you're driving and you're focused on the road, if you then need to come over here and adjust things, that can be a little, a little complex or even your driving modes or things like that. But that's where everything that you do through here, which isn't done through physical buttons, uh, can get a little complex for my liking. But if you're, if you love your gadgets, there's everything. We could probably do an entire video just on the stuff that's going on here. There's everything you could ever wish for right in these screens. However, everything you then touch, which is physical, feels just so luxury. Even the sound controls are finished in this crystal. Um, your gear selectors finished in this crystal. Everything you seem to touch is just beautiful. A lot of the people who are going to be spending time in this car are going to be right back here in the rear of the i7. So let's go hop in. So look, let's hop in here. First of all, the doors are huge. Everything you basically touch is massive in this car. And then if we just hop in right here, you'll see there are some pretty cool gadgets. So close the door, electrically assisted if you need it. Very heavy door and really, really wide. Look, I can just sit like this so comfortably. Really wide windows as well. So it's fully double glazed. And as you can tell, you've also got these shades right here. Now, what's really cool is you've got these screens, one on each side. So for each passenger in the rear, that basically allow you to control everything. In a lot of cars, including the S-Class or the previous 7 Series, that's done through a little tablet that lies in here. This has now become an induction charger. So I can charge my phone right here, which is quite a nice touch. And I also, while we're here, can show you that. Boom, I have two other USB-C chargers there. You're not short of charging. For example, even right here, there's another charger. So you can charge wherever you need to. But back to these screens, really convenient. And it's a really intuitive positioning. Um, it's obviously where your arm's going to be lying most of the time. And I just think it works really well the way they've put this in place. Gives me all of the things that I'd like to control. I can control the radio, my music. Uh, I can control the various lighting around the car. I can control things like if I want my blind to come down. That's just very easily done through there. Here it doesn't bother me as much having everything done through a screen as much as it does in the front. In the front, it just feels a little counterintuitive because you're driving and you're having to fiddle with a screen. Whereas back here, obviously, you're relaxed and you have time to spend time on, on this screen right here. Let's put that right back up. It allows me to do, obviously, all of my aircon and things like that and control my seating positions of which there are many there are many controls you can have massage seats for both the front and the back cooled and heated seats for both the front and the back i've actually then got four different settings for the heated seat for example more than the usual three there's i mean i don't even know how many is that eight ten nine different types of massages and i can actually then set my seat if i press on a button right here into a very luxurious position now this is exclusive to the person sat behind the front passenger because obviously you can't do this with the driver because that would be a worrying driving position to be in but the whole front passenger seat lies itself forward and a little footrest is going to come out from down below now it's a bit of a shame to have a white interior I find on this because you're putting your dirty shoes on your nice clean white interior and then out of the seat here pops out a leg rest so I feel like I'm basically sat in first or business class in an executive airplane whilst cruising down the motorway it isn't actually massaged the this part of the seat and I sound like I'm complaining. I'm not at all complaining. I think that that is not something you need at all. However, it is available in the S-Class. And that's the only reason why I mention it. There is more space back here. I was just sat in the S-Class in the equivalent seating position because this is a way you can sit in the S-Class as well. And I have about 10 centimeters more 
leg room here so i'm not for example i mean i'm not the tallest of people in the world but my feet aren't touching the front seat whereas in the s-class they were i'm also a little bit reclined and just overall this is just a stunning stunning place to be back here another really cool detail that i haven't personally seen in another car before is the lighting finish included in the panoramic sunroof so already first off just having a full panoramic sunroof is a really nice touch but then having it with lighting included i'll try and put a clip of it now so you can see what that looks like better is pretty spectacular and i guess is bmw's equivalent to the rolls royce starlight shall we see what it's like to be driven in this car first because i imagine a lot of people will spend their time back here well it only felt right to start in the back right here how comfortable is this this is special we're just entering casino square here in monaco in total luxury and I have no stress about you guys hearing me or not because uh, it is total silence in here. Not only because you have the really thick windows and just unbelievable sound deadening, but also because of the electric engine. No engine noise. You can't feel any gear shifts or anything like that because, of course, there is no gearbox. And I really think that the electric engine works well with this type of car. So when the Rolls-Royce Spectre was released, I remember that being the first car that I really thought okay that's cool that makes an electric car sexy and appealing to someone who's you know used to uh, more traditional combustion engines and this kind of pushes that further it's my first experience in an ultra luxury fully electric car and it makes sense it makes sense if you're staying in town i think a bit more because obviously there's still the issues of range it's around 500 kilometers driving like a saint and not on highways and things like that very different if you start doing long distance but around town if you're being driven around in the way that i very fortunately am right now then it makes a lot of sense as i said earlier the positioning of this little screen i think is fantastic you know if i want to just kind of open myself up and see what's going on in the outside world out there then i can very easily it all is very intuitive and this cashmere just feels so nice uh, I, I never thought of having a cashmere seat in a car before but it makes total sense and the amount of space that i have and if i open all of the blinds the amount of light that comes into this interior it's just a really well thought out interior and there are so many gadgets you can play around with i just discovered for example that if i press this right here all of a sudden i've got my cup holders and the crystal lights in the front keep changing colors and i can access anything that i wish from this little screen here so yeah as a place to spend time the back right here is amazing i mean you it's true that you don't have like in a maybach a little table that you could get out but i'm really nitpicking here it is just a stunning stunning place to be but i wonder what it's like to drive and here we are then at the wheel now and well it feels really nice it's not as large as you'd think i got the guys behind just completely chilling out good visibility steering is so light it's like steering into butter it's unbelievable and the steering wheel feels just such quality and i've got this head up display in front of me this augmented reality kind of uh, display in front of me which is uh, really cool we just had to maneuver as well and all of the sensors and cameras you have basically every camera you could imagine on this car so it will park itself but it'll also memorize for example your driveway at home and be able to then park itself every time you get home for example which on a car of this size does make sense you can feel that it's it's big heavy so 2.7 tons of this thing but the fact that there's no gear changes going on no gearbox really works well as i was saying when i was sat back there this type of car matches electric mobility really well and it's just such a pleasant place to be we're only driving around town we're not going to be trying out the 0 to 60 and things like that I mean, you have obviously all of the usual electric car kind of attributes pretty instant acceleration if you want it it basically also has fully one pedal drive so it will use the regen on deceleration or downhill or things like that to power up the car and the guys who have been driving it a lot told me that it's pretty incredible you can 
just take one road which happens to be more downhill and get to the end of it and it will be 40 kilometers you'll have 40 kilometers more range or something by the end of it which is pretty outrageous clients who will be buying this mainly will have a driver a lot of the time and if they're getting the electric one it's probably because they're not doing the longest distances all the time even though this does have all types of fast charging available and the app that you can access to make it all easy i still think the average client of this specific model of the 7 series is going to be mainly in city this is what they'll be doing most of the time and it's perfect for that 500 kilometer range when you're driving around town uh, holds better because the way the electric engines work is they use more electricity when on motorways whereas petrol engine cars have a higher range when they're on motorways this is kind of you have to flip that theory on its head it has up to i think it's level three self-driving it's basically more regulated by the regulations that we have here in europe compared to the states more than anything but it will do all the steering it will do all the braking and accelerating and everything if ever you do end up on the motorway which is also very relaxing unbelievable sound system trust me when i say that everything you touch or feel is but higher, highest grade luxury. This isn't the type of car we usually review on this channel, but it is a total gadget fest, and I really like it. We're going to test the acceleration. I am now in sport mode. Everything is red on the inside, and we've switched on the engine sound mode, which basically is gonna make some weird Tron noise as we go, but it's just so that you can get a sense of speed. You ready? Woohoo! Now, it's pretty impressive because we were, you know, we weren't at a standstill, which is where an electric car does best. But there's there's punch there. There's that instant torque you get from an electric engine, and the noise is odd. You feel like you're in some like Tron movie or whatever. But yeah, that that I'm not convinced by. But the the acceleration and just the way it feels, it's one of those luxury cars that feels just as nice being sat in the back as it does actually being behind the wheel. For the outro, I decided to sit in the back. Look at this, boom, electric door closing. Magnifique. Anyways, what a discovery, this car. I think it's, I've really, really, really enjoyed it. I feel very fortunate to have been able to experience it. So many gadgets on this that I think we'll end up seeing trickle down to various other BMWs and other cars. So it's always cool to experience it firsthand. I'm going to make the most of the back right here. One thing I did want to show you is it's now dark. The lighting, if I put my light away, can you see the lights in the panoramic sunroof? They're like these little light strips. It looks really cool uh, when you actually see it in person. Thank you guys Thank you for also. being here. I'm going to put all the links down below. If ever you are around Monaco, you should get in touch with these guys if ever you need a luxury car to be driven around in. And I'll see you guys very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.